Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Don Hutchinson is here, as is Steve Nichol. Sid, Lu Sid what are you reading there? <laughs> I've been reading this magnificent book, uh, Five League Titles and a Packet of Crisps. Oh, by, by, wow. By, um, <laughs> and, and you opened it randomly Steve, to a Steve chapter Nicholas where Stevie here. was naked with his trousers above his head, swinging them round, and his wife got very upset. Yeah, I... I I promise, I promise this wasn't set up in any way. I genuinely went like that and went, I was standing there with my trousers and the <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope the whole book, I hope the whole book is like that, Steve. I haven't had the chance to go through it all just yet. Uh, my, what what yeah, were you doing with your trousers, much. Stevie? What was the moment? Uh, I was uh, doing strip tease, Daniel. Yes, and we, I think we need some more details about this strip tease. Where well, part of, part, of that, part of that performance uh, means you've got to swing your trousers above your head. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and how did how did uh, your wife, for example, react to this strip tease, Stevie? Uh, not very well. Uh, I looked I looked down to where, from where she was sitting, and she wasn't sitting anymore. She had gone. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Left. What was that? Steve? Was it Ronnie? Something with Ronnie Whelan? It was Sammy Lee's. Yeah, testimony. Ronnie Whelan's testimony. Is Sammy that right, Lee. Steve? Yeah, Sammy Lee. Oh, Sammy Lee. Oh, Sammy's delighted. I've wasted, I've wasted the whole of my weekend watching FA Cup football. I thought I was doing knowledge, I was doing prep. All I need to do is read the book. Yeah, read Stevie's book. Go. That's fine. Yeah. Right? There you go. From Steve's book to snow. Sid, did you enjoy the snowstorm in Madrid? Were you able to make any snowmen? Well, it just so happens we have footage that we have found on uh, Sid's <laughs> oh, no. social media. What do you mean? Oh, no, you put it up there. Uh, <laughs> you sent it. Uh, we signed <laughs> with oh, the... if it's one that I put up, that's all right then. That's been filtered. What's no, the first fine, one? Yeah. The snowman? And we're going to put up the snowman, Sid, with a real I, I, Oviedo. You look a bit fed up in the background, to be honest. Do I? Oh, well, there you go. It was cold. Yeah, it's cold. It's snow. And then the dog in the snow. That's what everyone wants to see. How did Stella react? Yes. Well, um, she was a little bit shocked the first time she went out because the snow was very, very deep and very soft. And so she took a, a step out and kind of disappeared into it. I don't think she was quite expecting that. Snow is massively overrated, isn't it, Stevie? Oh, oh yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, it, it's annoying. Five minutes with the kids and you just want to get inside and warm. Everyone's wet, grumpy. Oh, dear. Dan, what, yeah? you do is, you, what you do is you forget to put the gloves on. Right, and then everything. And I can assure you, you're straight back in after about 20 seconds yep. when their hands are freezing. Especially when you've got your trousers <laughs> round you over your head. It gets a bit chilly. Yeah, uh, that doesn't help. <laughs> right. It's a football show for football people. If Manchester United go top of the Premier League tomorrow and win, will you guys give them credit? Don? Yeah. I got asked today who's in a title race and someone tried to suggest it was between six or seven clubs. And I went, no, 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 no. It's a three-horse race. Man U, Man City and Liverpool. The biggest test is the Liverpool game. If Man U go to Liverpool and beat Liverpool, they are serious contenders. If Liverpool turn up, as they normally do in big games and beat them, then I'm back in Liverpool probably being favourites. Is that a regular occurrence? Were you in the supermarket and someone just went, oh, there are six or seven teams in this race? Yeah, I was, <laughs> just... I'm obviously that famous in the supermarket. Someone stopped me in my stride and asked me <laughs> my opinion. You went, no. <laughs> uh, Stevie, you hate Manchester United. Were you giving them credit? I think we've been giving them credit uh, over the last three or four weeks. Through gritted teeth, some have suggested. So is it credit or not, regardless of the teeth? Well, I think the, credit, te the, teeth, so. the teeth are relevant, oh. aren't they? <laughs> Listen, if you give credit, you give credit. Whether you get your eyes shot, your teeth clenched or whatever. Right? Oh, there's one I'll way to give credit. I was swinging your trousers. Can I swing my trousers above my head and give them credit? Oh, that, God, what a moment that would be tomorrow if they go top of the table. Something for everyone. <laughs> yeah, right. I bet, uh, I bet I check with the wife first. <laughs> well, we know what the hell. We know what that answer will be. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> Eden Hazard was suited to play for Real Madrid and Griezmann was not suited to play for Barca. After more than a season, Sid, and seeing their performance, did Griezmann suited well or Hazard just a flop transfer? Well, Hazard is a, is a player that's had a, a huge amount of injuries. Um, and so it's very difficult to judge whether his transfer in the long run will be good or not. But so far, of course, it's been, it's been awful. And of course, you've got, you've got to look at this in the context of the deal itself. 
Um, Hazard had one year left on his contract at Chelsea. In other words, Real Madrid this summer could have got him for free. So that first summer, all of the money they spent on Hazard was basically designed to get him for one season. And of course, that money hasn't been money well spent. Now, you never know how it will go. You never know. what, But it was always going to be steep to pay upwards of 100 million euros for a player for one season to make sure that, of course, you got him for that season and then the seasons that followed. But so far, it hasn't worked at all. I don't think that necessarily, though, shows that he doesn't fit this team. It just shows that it hasn't gone well for him so far. Sid, how far do you think Barcelona will go in the Champions League this season, given their recent good form? Is it PSG, isn't it? Next up. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're always on a thing to nothing whenever you try and make predictions about the Champions League before the first knockout round, because of course you have that long two. Oh yes, we know when, that, when, Sid. But just get the draw to the point. And the games actually. Have. But I know. Uh, the, the point is, if I'm honest, I don't see Barcelona going any further in the Champions League. I don't see them getting past PSG at the moment. But there is, there are signs of things starting to fall in, into place for them. And in terms of the quality of the players they've got up front, they are stronger than I think most teams. But I just still feel like they're vulnerable. I still feel like structurally they're, they're still quite open. And yeah, I, I find it hard to imagine them getting through against PSG, to be honest. What about you, Don? Yeah, I just think there's a soft underbelly all of a sudden at Barca. I thought, you know, they seemed invincible a couple of years ago. Everyone was super afraid of them. You know, it was the great, you know, Messi's and Neymar and Suarez and all the Galactico players that they've had. Since they've lost one or two of those players and one or two players, They've got a little bit older. I don't think anyone fears Barca anymore. So I think they can probably just about scrape through against PSG, but that'll be as far as they go unless they get really lucky in the draw. I think there's some far bigger teams and better teams ahead of Barca. Who has a better chance of winning another Champions League, Steve Nicol? Neymar, Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi? Or none of them? Um, I would suggest Neymar just because of his age. Uh, you know, the... Ronaldo, no questions, coming to end his career. Uh, Messi's on that way. Um, it depends where he goes next. Um, so I would, I would say Neymar because, because he's got years ahead of him still. Uh, and whether it happens at PSG, he, he could leave. And most of the big sides absolutely would want to sign this guy. So I would say Neymar. Who is better, Don? Rashford or Sterling? Oh, my days. What a question that is. I mean, totally different. Oh, I'd probably have to lean slightly towards Sterling, but ever so slightly. Why? Um, I just think he can play a number of positions more so than Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford's not a number nine. I don't think he ever will be. I think he can try and play that role, but it's not his strength. Um, he's better off the left-hand side when he's got the ball at his feet or, or balls over the top. He's one of the quickest out there. Terrific in front of goal. But I think if you're looking at a list of sort of attributes, I think Raheem Sterling would probably tick one or two more, but it's ever so close. Stevie? Uh, I would say Rashford. I think he's a better finisher than Sterling. But who, um, who's a better player? Rashford. Really? Because Sterling left Liverpool? I think so. <laughs> given, uh, given Smith Rowe's recent performance for Arsenal, Don, should an attacking midfielder still be their top priority in the transfer window, or should it be another position? No, why on earth would Arsenal want to go out and buy an attacking player when they've got Smith Rowe? <laughs> yeah, they've got should all... Why go and buy a top class midfield player? Go and buy a top class centre half. Arsenal have been crying out for that for a decade. Speaking of crying, whose baby is that crying? Is that yours, Don? Is that your twins? Mm, no, they're shouting, but not crying. Ah, oh, maybe it's then we can hear. Uh, what sort of marking would you prefer while defending the corners? Now, Stevie, when you were at the Revs, am I right in saying you had zonal marking? Oh, I hate zonal marking. No, when we were at the Revs, we had exactly what Liverpool did, what I grew up with. That was uh, half and half. Half zonal, half marking. Don, which did you Basically. prefer? Hybrid. Hybrid, exactly as Stevie said. Hate zonal marking. Pe people don't take responsibility. You've, there's, there's no one culpable after a game. It's your fault. It was your fault. Everyone's just standing there zonal. I've done hybrid at Liverpool. Um, same as Sunderland with Peter Reid, where you get your three or four best headers of the ball, marking the opposition's three best headers of the ball, 
and then you have one or two zonal um, and in my opinion that's 100% the best way to go. Stevie, why are left-footed players generally one-footed while right-footed players are generally better with their weaker foot? Whatever we, whenever we picture a one-footed player, lefty like Robin, Di Maria or Meza Ozil come to mind. I have absolutely no idea. I, 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 there's just, there's the always been something. There's always been something about somebody who who's left-footed. It kind of sticks out more. Right. And I think because I think because it looks a lot more silky because they're left-footed, it makes the right foot look like a cricket bat. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, other than that, I've no idea. Don, do you have any theories? Not a theory, no. I mean, you, you sort of see it, didn't you? Where there's millions of right-footed players. David Beckham comes to mind, best right-footed player I've seen for a long time. I had no left foot, and there's other, other examples. But like Stevie said, all of a sudden you'll get like a left handed snooker player or a left footed player in midfield and he zings the ball out there and you go, oh, that was quality, that was a touch of silk, but no wait, real wait, theory you, on why. What are you talking one about? No one, can, one, no, no one looks at a left handed snooker player and goes, oh, look at him do that. <laughs> no one cares about that. What a ridiculous comparison. Well, it's not because the UK the UK championship is on at the minute. I'm, I'm watching it. So you, so you, you would be more What's astounded that? by a left hander <laughs> doing the shot that a right hander did? Yeah, because I think that's what the question's leading to, isn't it? No! <laughs> What's the question leading to, then? What? Snooker player. What about tennis? If you're left-handed at tennis, it looks better. Yeah, Mac and roll. Yeah. He always looked better than everybody else. There you go. Because he was left-handed. You're right. Oh, oh you're right, man. Don. Final question, Don. Did you ever go shoulder to shoulder on someone and it felt like hitting a brick wall? Was it something you did for an entire game and regret it? Once I'd done that, and I it was the only time in my career I played a game of football, and the next morning, all one side of my body, shoulder, ribs, thigh, everything was just covered in bruises the next morning, and I played against Fort Everton, against Man U, and Yap Stam absolutely buried me from the first minute till the last. And I kept going up for headers, after headers, after headers, and he just slaughtered me the whole game, and the whole side of my left-hand side of my body just totally bruised after playing 90 minutes against him. Wow. Not your right side, though. Uh, Stevie? <laughs> I had a couple. I told you one the other day about Mark Hughes. When yep. I booted him, thought it broke me toe. <laughs> the other one was, uh, I played in a five-a-side tournament in Israel in the off-season. All the Liverpool team went. And we split up into teams, and we played this Israeli side. And the, and the field was square. So... The car, whenever the ball went in the corner, uh, invariably it got stuck and then there was a huge battle and everybody was getting fired in. And there was a guy, a guy who'd been doing all dancing on it and all the flicks and all that stuff. And he was getting right up my nose. And he was in the corner with the ball and I thought, right, he, he, there's no way, he can't get out. There's, there's no escape. So I ran over and I rattled him. Unfortunately, I caught the underside of his boot and it ripped my big toenail right off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that was the end of my five a tournament. As got to oh. <laughs> but more importantly, you played on a square pitch. Honestly, well, it's a recipe for, for fighting. Because it you know, was this one, at least, at least with five a around, then the ball will, will move around. But when a ball gets stuck in the corner, and you've got you've got guys playing who are taking it seriously. Then it's just it's just a recipe for disaster. Unfortunately, I came out on the wrong end of that one. So it was there were walls, Stevie. Yeah, it was indoors. Yeah, indoors. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right, that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Sid, go and enjoy the rest of the snow. Uh, Don, go and watch your left-handers play snooker. Oh, right. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow to salute Manchester United going top of the table after their victory against uh, Burnley. Uh, <laughs> any, any any insights, Sid, before we go? Any any gems? What, what's the pager on? Oh, did you? Did, I mean, see if you can guess what Bob Boulder's nickname was. Oh. Here, here are the, 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 the very clever nicknames the rock. For, the, for the Liverpool players. <laughs> Bob Boulder's nickname, he's, The Rock. He's, um, he's the original Donald Rock, by the way. Big Bob. Baldo. Uh, I must have taken a long time to come up with those nicknames. Oh, dearie me. Uh, that's all. it. That's, what was yours? <laughs> you, Stevie, you were, you were Bumper. What were you, Don? 
just Hutch. Just Hutch. Hutch. Or Sammy Lee went for Dutch, actually. Oh. Sammy Lee mixed it up a little bit and went for Dutch. Lovely. So what's intriguing is that book came out, what, five years ago? Why haven't you read it yet? Um, well, you know, the, the table was a bit wonky and I threw the table out this weekend. So oh, I've only just taken it back no. underneath oh. the, the, the short leg. Hey. Hey. Just rude, Stevie. Hey, hey. No, of course. Said, well, hey, got... said, I don't care whether you read that or not. The real reason is that I was refusing to read this until <laughs> I got Steve to sign it for me. So, ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, that is it. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.